Hey kids, welcome to another episode of Tea Talk where I have a cup of tea and talk to you all about some books that I've been reading for my classes. This is the second Tea Talk in the series. If you haven't seen the first one, I will link it down below in the description bar. I'm just gonna get this out of the way now. You can always like this video if you like these sort of Tea talk -y videos and you can also hit that subscribe button if you also enjoyed this video. I would really appreciate it. This week's episode is brought to you by Sunday night of finals week. It's Monday tomorrow and I am so not ready for finals. I have two exams and two papers that are due as well as a project that I need to try to turn into my professor's office hours tomorrow. I actually was in the ER on the day that it was due and I couldn't go ahead and turn it in. Apparently I was suffering from a really bad migraine. Um, Really, it wasn't the worst migraine I've ever had, but yeah, I was throwing up um, for about three hours, and so I went to the ER, and they're just like, oh, you just have a really bad migraine. I was just like, okay, and then my stomach was still bothering me all weekend, so long story short, I missed the deadline for that assignment, but my professor was very gracious to let me go ahead and turn in a little bit later, which I have to thank her for because I really appreciate it. Anyways, let's get on with the tea talk, shall we? I'm going to have a sip. Go ahead and get yourself some tea. Pause this video if you don't have tea yet. Mmm. Peppermint tea. Very nice decaf so that I can go to sleep after I film this and then the second, the last tea talk that I'm doing. So today's tea talk is on Martin Amos's Time's Arrow or The Nature of the Offense. This is another one of the Man Booker shortlisters. I don't know if it won or not. Let's see. I can't remember. I don't think I won any read I don't think I won any winners of the Man Booker Prize I think well for the class itself we did but I think this one was just short yeah this is just shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize so none of the books that I chose to read were actually winners of the Man Booker Prize which um when I do the reflection paper for this course I'm going to be talking about how some of the books I read were really good and they were only shortlisted and they didn't win, so what does that tell you about how the prize is picked and yada yada. Anyways, it'll be interesting. Um, so let's get into Time's Arrow, shall we? So this book is really, really interesting. I'm not just saying that because I've already said that for a couple of these books, but this one's really interesting because it's told in a backwards perspective. And so I don't want to give too much away, but it's told from sort of like this third person entity that's living in this guy's body. I think his name is Todd Friendly. This the the character that the narrator is inhabiting um he has multiple names throughout the book. And so I want to make sure that I get yeah, so it's Todd Friendly, yeah. So we, you start out knowing this character that this the narrator is embodying as Todd Friendly. And when I say the character is embodying, it's because this isn't Todd Friendly's mind and consciousness is talking to us, but it's the narrator's consciousness, which is an entirely separate entity, which somebody who's um, like in Friendly and is in the person sort of looking on their life as their life is going backwards. So everything is in reverse, the conversations are reverse, um, bodily functions are in reverse, eating and drinking is in reverse. It's very interesting. And it's a really, I mean, it's it's a good book. It's not very long. It's the shortest book that we've read this semester, or that I've read this semester. And it was, it was, I don't want to give a lot away because there's like some really interesting surprises. and. Um, if you do look at the book online, I don't recommend that you do. It does give you away. It does give away this really important plot piece, and so then in your mind you're kind of thinking to that plot piece, and you're waiting for you to get to that plot piece because it's going. You're going backwards in time, and you're building up to this huge momentous um, sort of reveal that you get, and. It's just, it's, when you know it's coming, it's like you're waiting and you're anticipating it and then it happens. But when you don't, I don't know what it would be like if you don't know because I accidentally was spoiled with this big old plot piece. And, but, it, so I don't know. But it's super interesting to think about this big old plot piece and think about the perspective of this third person party. And also, he's not only commenting on he or she or whatever this third person is. The narrator isn't only commenting on what they are observing, but also what 
Todd Friendly is observing in this huge plot piece towards the young adult age of his life. And I find that really interesting because the reader not only gets one perspective, but he get, the reader gets two perspectives as well as forming a perspective on their own about what's going on. And I think that is really interesting. And I'm very surprised that that didn't make this book win. I don't know which book won the year that this was, um, the year that this was shortlisted. This was a 1991 book, um, so I don't know what what book won 1991, but I'm really shocked that this was not, um, I mean it was shortlisted, but I'm really shocked that this didn't win because it deals with this, and it deals with this idea of moving backwards as well as somebody else inhabiting somebody else's body and being totally conscious and that's the only consciousness that we hear from and then commenting on that person's life as sort of like, I don't know, they kind of, at the end it kind of like seems like you don't know what this entity is but at the end you kind of get this idea that it might not be a uh, worldly entity, you know, it might be like a heavenly entity almost. Or maybe not quite, but it's just really interesting. I don't want to give too much away, and this video is getting kind of long, but I would definitely recommend this book for you to read. I also picked up another book. I forget what it's called, but it's by Sarah Waters. I watched her play Fingersmiths Finger in Ashland, and it was very, very good. And so I picked up this other book. I cannot remember it, but it's also told in this backwards sort of layout, but it's... Um, it's not, I don't think it's like this. I only read a couple pages because I was picking between that book and then the other book that I'm going to be reviewing after I finish this video. And I chose the other book, but it is also towards the backwards point of view. But I think that this did a marvelous job. You're not really lost. You, you understand what's going on. It's not like, it's going backwards and I'm totally just, it's really good. And I definitely recommend it. Anyways, so, two out of three books done. Let's take a sip of tea to congratulate ourselves on a job well done so far, and I hope you all have a wonderful night, and if you are in finals week, good luck. Winter break is coming, my friends. Okay, bye.